Hello and welcome to Tuesday Newsday, your number one resource for the entire week's worth of VR news. This is December 3rd, 2019. Let's just jump right into the news. We just got a load of VR stats dumped right on us, and a lot of it is pretty interesting once you analyze it. The November 2019 Steam Hardware Survey is now available, and it pretty much shows zero relative growth for the VR category. The Oculus Rift and Rift S still have the majority market share, holding 51% of all headsets on Steam. The HTC Vive is steady at 35%, the Index at nearly 5%, and the Windows Mixed Reality as well as other is around 10-ish percent. The more concerning matter here is that the numbers have stagnated from previous months, showing nearly no growth or new adoption. Now, I know we may hear about the survey from other people trying to attack VR, but rest assured, the Quest with Questlink is not included in the survey, which is pretty massive. Not to mention, headsets bought over Black Friday and Cyber Monday were obviously not included, as some of them haven't even shipped yet. I'm expecting to see a pretty decent jump in the concurrent users, as well as a nice spike in VR headsets in general during the next survey, just due to the influx of VR users gained from the holiday season. After the Half-Life Alex announcement, the Valve Index actually went out of stock, which is a pretty good sign that we're going to be getting a little boost of users, as well as the Rift S Black Friday sales and the Quest going out of stock from quite a few retailers as well. I'll also mention that unfortunately, the HTC Vive Cosmos is treading at less than 0.01% of Steam users. Look, this is kind of what happened when you don't pay attention to the consumers that actually buy your products and instead ship a headset that doesn't fulfill any of the things that we kind of want. It's not a budget headset, and it's not a premium one either. The Cosmos has middle-of-the-line specs, seemingly rushed software to accompany the hardware, and a premium price. It's a hard sell when the Rift S is nearly as good and cost a fraction, and the Index is significantly better and cost just a little bit more. I still think we need HTC in this race and all isn't lost, but geez, you kind of put yourself in a tough situation, I'm not gonna lie. Maybe this kind of deserves its own video, to be honest. There is a little bit of a more disappointing crisis, however. The top-selling VR headset this Black Friday was the Oculus Go. If you don't know what that is, it's a 3 Degrees of Freedom standalone VR headset, similar to the Quest, and by that I mean the only thing it shares is that you don't need a PC to run it. All the necessary hardware is built in, but the similarities end there. There is no external tracking on the headset or inside-out tracking, so that means that you can only move your head rotationally. Also, you don't use touch controllers with this HMD. You get a clicker, pretty much. Also, don't expect high-octane games like Beat Saber or Journey of the Gods or Robo Recall on it. And of course, there is no PC tether functionality that comes close to the Quest. At this point, it's pretty much a VR 360 media player with a few games added in. For Pete's sake, even Oculus Rooms is pretty much killed at this point, and that was a giant reason for people that I know that wanted the headset in general. So why is this a crisis? Well, people see Oculus, they see sale, they've been hearing about VR, so they buy. They get the headset with eager anticipation, and it kind of sucks. In some places, the Go was selling for as low as $120 and $150 in other spots, which if you know what you're buying and know what to expect from the headset, then yeah, that's a good deal actually. Some people want VR just to chill and watch media, but the crisis part comes in with me being worried that many people just saw VR and a cheap price and a big name and took the plunge only to be discouraged by VR all over again. It's like Google Cardboard and Gear VR 2.0. I feel like we're we're out of this stage where cardboard is all people know of VR, and maybe because Oculus decided to go pretty much liquidate their Go stock, we might have to deal with it all over again. Look, I don't think consumers are dumb. Plenty of people that bought the Go this Black Friday likely knew exactly what they were buying. It certainly has its use cases. There is, however, a large amount of people that are merely interested in VR, see Oculus as a reputable company, hear about all these game announcements and see a good price and go for it. Not everyone watches YouTube or checks Reddit or even fact checks before ordering something. The largest demographic that I'm worried about here are people buying VR for their kids or family for Christmas, for example. Like, oh, my kids said that they want this VR thing. This has great reviews and a fantastic price. They're going to be so happy. Well, I hope no one is disappointed when instead of playing Half-Life Alex this March, they'll be watching the trailers for it instead in their VR headset. That's 
totally incapable of playing it. Sales are good, don't get me wrong, it just has me a little worried, and I was just hoping that something like the Quest or Rift S would be taking that top headset sold. So this is actually a cool episode to talk about a bunch of really interesting experimental VR technology. Then we'll get into some gaming stuff, but first on the list is the Luxid Link. Connect your mind in VR. This device is pretty much an EEG monitor that attaches to a VR headset that records voltage changes from your brain, and through a mixture of software and the actual sensors on the monitor, you can do a variety of things with that information. If you're skeptical, then that's perfectly fine, but I'll explain just a bit so you can get an idea of how and where the Luxid is gathering the data. Different sections of your brain are responsible for different functions. Your occipital cortex handles tasks like spatial awareness, spatial recognition, and orientation, while your parietal cortex is where your motor functions mostly take place. The frontal cortex, however, is where we take control of ourselves, and the prefrontal cortex is where a device like the Luxid focuses. This is where a lot of our social behavior is handled, from our personality expression to decision making, and this is why the sensors are right there on the forehead. It's where you can most accurately monitor EEG data from that part of our brain. Reading patterns in brainwaves and assessing the amplitude and frequency of said brainwaves were given specific data on our cognitive process. For example, when beta waves are present, signified by a specific frequency of 16 to 31 hertz, it's representative of someone actively thinking hard about something. You got a busy mind. Now, when you combine a ton of data together, this information is useful for a variety of things, some of it being absolutely terrifying and maybe even dystopian in the wrong hands. The first example of use cases given by Luxid is neuroentertainment, specifically the example of, okay, you're watching a movie. The sensors can tell that you're getting bored and you're not engaged, so ramp up the intensity of the entertainment. Throw a curveball to get your attention back on the media. Another thing is mental health. It's pretty obvious given the right calibration to tell if someone is stressed, relaxed, upset, or deep in thought. This together with therapy has some pretty amazing uses regarding PTSD patients, people stricken with anxiety, fear of certain things that maybe the person isn't even consciously aware of, and that's all pretty cool. EEG can also be used to see certain brain patterns if a person is in a fatal condition that wouldn't otherwise be apparent. The next is actual interaction using your brain and this is kind of so-so to be honest. The only demo available at the moment is one where you could use your concentration levels to levitate blocks within VR. Now, I don't know if this is super accurate or not, but either way, the idea that you can control anything using your brain through just a set of sensors on your forehead is really freaking cool, and it opens my brain to the insane possibilities of playing games in VR using only my mind. One of my hottest takes regarding VR is that I think personally that brain-controlled virtual reality will be far bigger than than any omnidirectional treadmills at some point, solving at least some of the locomotion problems that we have, but that's a discussion for another time and we obviously aren't anywhere close to that. And now the scary part. Neuromarketing. Definition being a commercial marketing communication field that applies neuropsychology to marketing research, studying consumers' sensory motor, cognitive, and effective response to marketing stimuli. Really, it's companies hacking our brains to see which colors we respond to, what fonts we stare at, and what holds our attention the most. I mean, we already do that now. How long you stayed on a web page or which ads you clicked based on your demographics, or even what cookies you picked up gives us the targeted ads that we have now. But getting that information directly from our brains just has a very different feeling. How does this tech going mainstream into something like a VR headset, or in the future, I'm sure, AR devices, change the way ads are targeted at us, or how political campaigns are run, or how companies keep us locked in and addicted to social media through literally reading our brains? As excited as I am for this sort of technology, and in a way, I feel like a lot of it is inevitable, it still makes me feel a little uncomfortable, and all of it feels a little Orwellian, or at the very least, black mirror-y. And yeah, I said mainstream because it's kind of already at that point, at least sort of. You can actually pre-order this device for your Vive or Vive Pro like right now. And did I mention it's also on sale? It costs $239 and if you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description. I actually wouldn't mind testing this out and it seems like a pretty interesting package. I do have more new VR tech that's popped up, but first let's stop for a meme break. So this past weekend, I went over to my family's house for a visit and took the opportunity to show them what VR is all about. Of course, I brought my quest and in my family, we like Star Wars. So I fired up some Vader Immortal and got my little brother in. And this is what happened. Get him, get him, get him. Ah, ah, ah. Don't let him hit you. Oh. Oh. 
So the TV is fine, no real damage, and in hindsight, I could have done a much better job at setting up the Guardian Boundary, but especially after being in VR so much and showing so many people, I never imagined that this sort of thing would happen to me, or my parents' TV, I guess. This is the sort of thing that I'd normally see on Reddit or Twitter, and I'm the one laughing at, but hey, I guess every now and then, reality hits you hard. And now, back to the news. So I've talked Varia before with the pretty sweet VR2 headset that was recently announced. Fully compatible with Steam VR, incredible resolution, eye tracking, hand tracking, just very limited field of view, and an incredible price tag to go along with it of $5,000. Well, Vario is back at it again with the XR1, XR being the industry standard term for VR and AR combined. And that's right, this headset is designed to fully utilize VR and AR, still using the Bionic displays with a resolution of 1440 by 1600 with the extra micro displays providing that extra clear image. Still has a pretty low field of view, but now has two 12 megapixel cameras on the front that allow for stereo pass-through in a full AR slash mixed reality mode, with heads-up display and all. This is being made to developers mainly for people using VR and MR in their workflow and will cost a whopping $10,000. Eh, pricey, but still cool, I suppose. One last interesting device is this AR controller by Lithos that was recently made available for around $200. Using a totally new design philosophy, rather than traditional VR or AR controllers or relying on hand tracking, you could do all sorts of tasks within VR and I could see something like this being hyper useful with a Google Glass or NREL glasses and using this as a controller input. I kind of imagine devices like this are going to be implemented into our everyday lives once AR reaches that point and I'd probably see this turning into some sort of fashion accessory if someone like Apple gets a hold of it. And now, on to some really quick gaming news and updates. Nostos, that VR MMORPG that has been mega hyped in the past, is releasing in just three days on the 6th of December on Steam. I personally had some mixed feelings when I played the most recent beta, but that of course was the beta. I can't judge it fully yet. And I may make a video about it, just not sure yet. And of course, just a reminder that Boneworks is releasing in one week from today, on December 10th. So next Tuesday Newsday, I will be covering its release as well as streaming it quite a bit. In addition, I will be giving away a few keys to the game during that stream next week, so even though that's still a week away, just keep that in mind. I am mega excited as we all are to see what Stress Level Zero has in store for us, so it's only a week away. And I almost forgot. Question of the week. Here from Maleo92, can you explain how blue cheese is made? Well, I love cheese, even cheese that's blue. Basically, blue cheese is made in a similar way that all other cheeses are made, using milk of cows, or sheep or goats, but during the aging process, a culture of mold, that being penicillium, is introduced during a process called needling, which is what provides that cheese with the blue streaks that we see in high quality blue cheese. Fun fact, or myth maybe, blue cheese is thought to be discovered by a drunken cheesemaker that left his cheese out in a damp cheese cave. When he came back to it, that cheese had a blue mold running through it, but he ate it anyways, and I guess decided to start leaving more cheese in the wet cheese cave more often. <laughs> And make sure you leave your questions of the week below. Who knows, I might just answer yours next. Just real quick, go ahead and check out Gamerceps. It's a product that I use all the time and it's a powdered energy drink with nootropic ingredients as well that keep my brain focused and going while playing in VR and while making these videos. No sugar, no calories, keto friendly, and it's all just good stuff. Use code THRILL at checkout and you can get 10% off your next order. All right, and that's the week's news. I will be streaming on Twitch today as I do every Tuesday, so come in, stop by, and we can continue this conversation. Thank you to everyone that you see here for being an amazing Patreon supporter, especially our Omega supporters like our boy Skeleto. Don't forget to like this video if you love it, subscribe if you want more of this, and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, thrill out.